Welcome to a day with Ethan Z, a leadership series uh, focusing on bringing leaders from different regions and to understand from their perspective and their case studies, success stories, and also understand what is typically happening at a global level. And uh, today we have Rudresh, who is head of uh, Cognizant Managing Corporate Real Estate, one of the largest uh, portfolio. And uh, welcome, Rudresh, and uh, thank you for taking out your time. And um, uh, my co-host, Lisa. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Radresh, we're really happy to have you with our, our series today. Thanks for coming. I need to thank both Vina and uh, Lisa uh, for giving me an opportunity to share my thought process, and it's an honor for me. Thank you. You bring so much. Your experience reflects a great deal of high-level leadership in facilities project management and real estate, but also a background in civil engineering, so it's a really powerful combination. Your specialties go well with well beyond that. Um, to it includes some um, important competencies like health and safety, employee experience, cost saving initiatives, resource planning and deployment, and more. How on earth did your path from civil engineering lead you to where you are now with so many specialties? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> uh... Ever since my childhood, when I observed various buildings were under construction, uh, I was fascinated by buildings. Uh, they get different shapes, different colors, different purpose. And I always thought buildings are permanent on earth. And if I need to do anything in my life, I need to do building permanent structures. So that's where my curiosity started. What I need to learn to make buildings. Because if you look at all around the world, monuments, they're all structures or buildings, and they've been there for ages and almost gets the credibility of being permanent. Uh, during my inquisitiveness to find out, some, someone told you need to become a civil engineer. And that's when my dream started, dream journey. And of course, I completed my civil engineering. I was very passionate while studying. I wanted to go in depth of everything. Uh, ultimate aim was to make permanent structures. So post uh, doing my engineering, I came from a small town in Karnataka, India, called Daungere. I completed my engineering in 1992. And the uh, nearest largest city was Bangalore, or known as Bangalore earlier. So the moment I landed here, along with a bunch of my classmates, friends, uh, this was a different world altogether. Construction was a different world, what we learned in college versus what actually happening. Uh, civil engineer, engineering had wide arrays of career growth. You can get into uh, construction of dams. You can get into construction of uh, highways, railways, um, roads, so many different variety of construction. but buildings were specially designed and controlled by architects that's what my discovery led when i reached bangalore and i was so disappointed how can this happen civil engineering are the greatest fellows to make structure on the earth but here i see architects are designing they are appointing the contractor they are advising the client they are telling everything to be done so i got Initially, I was disappointed. Then I got a little frustrated with myself. Then I decided, what is that architects do differently from civil engineers? So I said, I will join an architecture firm uh, to find out what do they do. So when I went for interviews, uh, three, four interviews happened. They all said that you are a fresher. You don't bring any value to our service line. You should be at the project site and execute. I said, OK, I know something which may be of use to you. I can make good drawings. I am extremely good in making drawings. Then one of the architects said, OK, uh, we will hire you as a draftman. So I accepted the job, and uh, it was a good decision by me. Uh, I got a lot of insight how uh, life cycle of a structure happens from 
why it is a building is required how it gets used what facilities and services have to have buildings inside it what are bylaws how bylaws got derived how town planning happens what is the density of population so i worked um, I started as a draftman but because of my curiosity always every day i'm curious i want even though i'm doing drawing my ears are always listening to all the studio who's talking what and later by the evening if i have curious question i go and ask them what is that so it's civil engineering or construction of building does not mean only concrete bricks or pipelines it, it has a lot of things you need to bring life into a structure structure is actually dead how do you bring life into a structure you need good light natural light you good ventilation uh, you need electricity power you need uh, air conditioning you need uh, various elements make bring life into a structure so that led one to another i learned about electricity i learned about uh, air conditioning i learned about interiors i learned about furniture so that's how uh, it all started uh, one of the consultants referred me to wipro uh, project heads of wipro saying that this kid knows everything so you should hire him <laughs> so that's when i joined wipro i mean uh, by god's grace i got a fantastic mentor coach and a boss in Vipro. Uh, his name was Bhaktavad Salam. So he said that in Vipro, one engineer has to manage a project, an office project, because Vipro is into IT services end to end from designing, appointing contractors, buying materials and delivering it to the business. So you need to start in understanding from the business what you need, how many seats, why conference rooms, discussion rooms, reception, various aspects, cafeteria. So first you have to gather information from the business, understand how they are going to uh, use the office. You have to have a flow of things in an office. There are multiple flow happens. One is people flow, employees. Second is client who come on, on and off third materials come into a facility related to cafeteria related to housekeeping related to maintenance uh, so you need to find out all the flows how it happens it should you should never create a clash of those flows it should not happen that there is a client is walking passing through from reception to conference room and somebody is carrying a food trolley across the board i mean even though it is covered but you get a smell of the food uh, which is a distraction to a customer his focus has to be somewhere else uh, bhaktavat salam had very unique uh, quality uh, whenever i used to go to him to get approval on any subject he will make me sit across the table he will not sign the paper he will ask certain set of questions if i answer those questions i he will sign my po or contract otherwise he will not sign now he will ask various types of questions which is unimaginary uh, micro level questions uh, for example first time i went i'm saying that i need to buy these blinds or curtains to office uh, please sign the po i am running short of time uh, inauguration scheduled 15 days from now it has to be put there uh, instead of looking at the value, etc., then he started asking, what is it made of? I don't know why it, what is it made of? I called a vendor, he said, it's a curtain. So I said, I looked at the curtain, material felt good, color matches, architect approved. I, I should go and fix it. He said, no, 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 first tell me what is it made of? Uh, then I ask, I will find out and let you know, sir, on the brochure I will go through. Uh, then he asked, is it fire retardant? I said, why it has to be fire retardant? In my own mind, why my boss is asking all these questions to me? But he trained me over next four to five years that it's 
as a project manager, it's not important, not only important to select and install, but you need to have an in-depth understanding of every material, what you're going to buy at a micro level. He was asking for durability. I said, why you want, I, my job is to make office and go. Why should I worry about durability? He says, then we got to know whatever investment we do, depending upon the durability, you get the returns. That's when while working with him for one particular project, which I did for Wipro G medical system, it's a very innovative space. In the beginning itself, he said, once you complete this project, it's a very important project for the business. You are going to maintain that facility for one year. That put a bomb in my brain because now I was not having the hat of a project manager who is executing the project, who's focused on material contractor coordination, aesthetics, lighting, colors. The other half of my brain started thinking, Rudresh, you have to maintain this facility for one year and you will face problems if you choose wrongly now. If you design it wrongly now, whether it's a PowerPoint, whether it's a temperature control, et cetera, et cetera. That's where my engineers also started thinking from a facility manager perspective. Till then I was an engineer, a designer, uh, a constructor. Uh, later I started realizing that was a good instant in my past experience where I started wearing the hat of facility manager while creating a facility. But all said and done, uh, he may ensure that I do the maintenance for one year. And I learned a lot. Uh, it was, there are very minor aspects which we don't know uh, if I don't wear a facility manager hat, whether it's a housekeeping, how a tabletop is wiped, whether it's a wet cloth, type of cloth, whether it collects the dust or distributes the dust, the kind of vacuum cleaner what you need to do, the type of carpet what you need to have, what challenges the housekeeping or any all the employees who are in, internal or outsourced members face. Unfortunately, they don't have get a voice to hear or listen by somebody who takes decision. They just go through the grill every day, uh, face the same problem, face the same challenges. They don't tell anyone because the facility is already run. Ah, so when I started wearing that hat of a facility manager, I realized many aspects, uh, durability, uh, maintenance, um, ease of uh, addressing problems if there is a shutdown happens, unknown shutdown uh, or known shutdowns. I mean, I cannot put a water pump in a very congested place where I cannot remove it. Or uh, I cannot put an air conditioning machine, indoor unit, uh, just next to a conference room because when you want to maintain or keep it neat, uh, there's a space you need to put a ladder, you have to climb, you have to remove the filters, you have to take it to the washroom, clean it, dry it, bring it back. All that duration, the conference room is blocked. So I learned a lot. That's how my combination of civil engineer and facility manager came together. So I hope I answered your question. That, that is a fabulous story about your journey. I love that. Thank you, Rudesh. I think you you covered it well. I think uh, uh, one of the things is about uh, when you look at uh, your career, right? I think uh, one is you learned, one is hard way, uh, you got into details. I think I for detailing and uh, FM has to be multi-skilled and you need to know that typically what kind of material is getting into your facility is very, very important. And uh, uh, Today, any any FM, if you have to excel, upskilling and reskilling is very, very important. And uh, you also share your expertise with others as a coach and a mentor. And I'm doing coaching and mentoring people. 
what are the, what are the important changes or trends uh, you see in real estate operations that the fm should uh, be watching for today and that's where they have to keep a tab of before i answer that question i need to inform everyone all my colleagues in the fm fraternity they are saying in an organization no one's job becomes fm's job because if there is an if there is a work which has to be attended and it's not defined in anybody's kra then it becomes our kra i need to get those things done uh, so fms uh, need to wear a hat of unpredictability what my leadership will ask on which day is very uncertain especially going forward because i see our offices are going to be more of event space than routine space every day it would be used in a different manner uh, especially due to hybrid work culture now earlier it was running every day same things were repeated it was a routine just like manufacturing you come you do your job you eat you have coffee drinks and you go all employees used to do the same thing as an fm manager i can expect what is going to happen tomorrow what can happen uh, one month down the line one year down the line but now post covid things have changed offices are going to be event space whether the client host whether it's going to be a team gathering whether it's a leadership event whether it's going to be a team event birthdays office is going to more focus on event it is not going to be for routine works now this puts a bigger challenge for a facility manager to gear up themselves to expect unpredictability by expecting unpredictability we can prepare ourselves i can align all my services for this unpredictability uh, whether it's from a cafeteria perspective or arranging that birthday cake or um, what is required by the client who's visiting to the office how can those things be arranged uh, preparing myself uh, my service lines my subordinates for this unpredictability brings a success if i don't prepare it is going to be a disaster i won't call it as disaster it's going to be not so good experience by the employees by the clients by the business leaders so i am indirectly i'm letting them down so i am expecting things to become more event spaced use of office hence we need to gear up best way is to become a event manager of course we as facility manager various multiple hats in a day in a facility so the new cap added is event manager so uh, once you wear the event manager hat uh, and look at the whole office from a different color specs uh, you will automatically align you will gear up you can predict you can imagine uh, that's how it's going to happen it's going to be a challenge uh, second part not only event manager you also have to become a part hospitality manager you need to make offices inviting to employees and employees needs to find excuses to come to office as an hospitality manager's hat you need to give those excuses for employees to come to office for example there is a team they want to celebrate completion of project client is happy client has sent an appreciation email so the team discuss over a call like this oh congratulations all of you everybody says hi hi but someone will say hey, let's go to office office is amazing beautiful everything is there let's have a one hour celebration we can meet other colleagues we can meet leaders today the most deterrent uh, to reach office an employee makes has to make an effort to reach office and it's a it's an effort which was not recognized pre pandemic we took it for granted 
now that effort has become taken a big shape and it's visible to every associate or employee now they want to ask question i am taking so much of effort to reach office do i get fruit or benefit of reaching after reaching office for example we take great efforts to go to mall but when i end reach the mall i get a fruit of my efforts i watch a movie i have a good food i have a good buzzing ambience i do go to mall or um, marketplace or an event of social events uh, parties etc where that effort will remain but you are getting a result but currently employees think by going to office i am not going to get anything so now we being a facility manager with an event manager hat and a hospitality manager they can expect something and it will encourage employees to come to office setting that expectation to employees is going to be key for our success hope i answered my your question you 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 answered the question and then some <laughs> so um that's that's a lot of the challenges that that people see that that come to fms right now and a, a um, some of the trends in FM real estate. You share your expertise a lot with others as a career coach and a mentor. What tips do you give them that are outside of these specific challenges for how should they uh, keep up to date and develop their skills, maintain their sharpness for the, the challenges of the industry? I need to say... Uh to become an F facility management is an amazing job it it's not noticed by the larger employee it's quite an eventful energetic every day is different kind of thing unlike other jobs which are routine you can spend whole of your professional career in facility manager and you will still find every day is a new day putting a new challenge to you it's an exciting career to pursue i strongly encourage it's just that you need to be aware uh, to meet this every day new you should be prepared for it uh, that's the first point about i strongly encourage uh, team members to build their career in facility management now, how to build their career in facility management? Uh, it, it, it's very simple. Uh, I would I have three simple mantras which, if one follows, they will succeed. The first mantra is to observe to appreciate. I want every facility manager, whether irrespective whether they are juniors, just entered the facility uh, field, mid-level facility managers, or grown become a senior you need to appreciate somebody in a day one or two or three more the better now don't just appreciate saying thank you um, so you need to tell the name of the person what is the reason you are appreciating and while appreciating you have to look into that eye of the person and appreciate this will build this quality or ability to appreciate will build leadership qualities in you second it will also make you learn faster everyday small aspects how i looked at what cloth was used to clean the table i never in previous to that almost i worked eight years i never questioned that but I wanted to appreciate that cleaning person. He was doing that table so clean, neat, with such a dedication. Uh, nobody has observed him or noticed. We take, took it him for granted. He, when he went back to his, um, that dirty cloth, he cleaned it, he put a soap, he dried it to come back tomorrow and use it again. He didn't throw it in the janitor room and went away. So when we start, we start looking, excuse us to appreciate everyone in our team. Uh, we start observing the effort. We 
appreciate the person who look up to you so it creates a dual accountability then i'll become more responsible on a day to day basis so start appreciating somebody in a genuine manner by telling their name look into their eyes and tell the reason why you are appreciating you will gain lot more in your facility management career than uh, anywhere else the second mantra uh observe to learn now i am not saying see to learn see happens only in my eyes uh, when i say observe to learn where all your senses are focused on it in a facility there are thousands of thing happen every day to make it alive a facility alive Uh, you need to know how a sprinkler system works you need to know the difference between what is an led bulb or a cfl bulb you need to learn about the threads of a carpet made you need to learn various aspects i can go on listing but there are so much to learn you cannot learn whole of your life also there so much so what i say is that learn small bit every day but you need to wear an eye and be curious to learn about it uh, that's why i say observe to learn uh, say all said and done you should become an expert in once you complete 10 years in your work profession any profession even in facility management also you should become an expert you cannot just say i am a 10 year experienced person and i am expert in nothing that's a loss that's a loss for each one of us so to become an expert in 10 years of working you need to observe to learn how that installation happened what screws were used to fix that door it majority of carry a mindset oh if i need to learn i have to spend a lot of time that's not true it takes fraction of a second or a few minutes just take up that screw and look at it what it is made of ask the carpenter what it is made of it why you chose this particular screw uh, is it aluminum is it wood he he is so happy to explain you if you ask the right person what it is so acquisition of smaller knowledge every day makes you become an expert by the end of 10 year then you can uh, by the time you since you have become an expert you can bring significant value to your organization wherever you go that's it the last mantra is behave to be famous there is a tendency as facility manager we always stay back of the stage we are not visible even though we do lot of work we love to be on the backstage invisible people we don't get credit for our efforts so i say don't take that step you should be in the front now when i say behave to be famous you dress well you learn etiquette you should be visible to the leadership you should be first front in the space you learn the acquire the skills of communication verbal written everything you should do should look like that you are a famous person you you need to have the body language confidence etc so why i am saying that behave to be famous see uh, in a facility manager's role every day you need to take decision some or the other for to take the decision you need to get authorized who will authorize you your leadership will authorize you now how will your leadership authorize you? only if they get confidence in you how to build that you need to be in the front you cannot be in the back so three mantras observe to appreciate it will build your leadership qualities uh, not taught by any graduate schools you will learn it fast second observe to learn it will increase your expertise and third behave to be famous it gives more visibility it will authorize you it will give you more responsibility and it will enhance your capability
thank you Radesh. i think these uh, values will definitely definitely help uh, somebody to build a leadership role i think uh, these are very simple to practice too um, and you also had written an article about uh, uh, start with an entrepreneurial mindset I, i think you've been talking about getting into details taking ownership right so when you written this article start with an entrepreneurial uh, mindset which describes the notion that leaders need to change their thinking uh, to focus on what value or service or expertise they bring in this supports the importance of, of an facility management or navigating the fm organization from being a cost centric to a critical business partner which one piece would you advise uh, uh, to fm embarking on this journey i think we've been talking about transformation of a facility manager to a leader uh, level or a business leader i think where would you give that one single piece of advice for them like embarking on that journey see uh, regardless of you being an employee in an organization but if you have a mindset of entrepreneur when you are day to day job your career growth will be fantastic why an organization hires people you need to bring a value to the organization not do the work do the work is done by other members who come 24 days in a month or 20 days in a month they do some physical aspects get salary and go only if you have an entrepreneur mindship you will bring value to your organization when i say entrepreneur mindship specifically for facility manager first thing you should think and imbibe in your body that you are the owner of this facility owner this belongs to me that's the first mindset second when it belongs to you you will look at what you are investing what tangible benefits you are bringing back and lots of intangible benefits you are getting back imagine a hotel you are a hotel manager and the hotel belongs to you would you want it to be a run down place where no customer walks in or will you go and ensure every room is neat every place is clean you take feedback you improvise ultimate aim is to bring more and more customers so that you bring value financial benefits to the organization you bring happiness in your customers you are using your facility you get reviewed and referred and you get appreciation what else you need so if a hotel manager can do it for a hotel why can't a facility manager do the same thing for a facility you need to understand that you are hired by an organization not to do routine work you need to understand that you need to discover how you bring value first second demonstrate that you have bought value third get recognition for bringing that value all three aspects are important uh, that's how you will become a great facility manager thank you so it all starts with entrepreneur mindship i have noticed many of uh, across the board when i go and uh, events uh, i do ask how many of you think the facility belongs to you you are the owner of it very few hands raise there is a need to change that mindset you need to take that ownership irrespective of how many companies you change irrespective of which facility you do the day you do you become the owner till you move out but during that entire duration you should have a mindset that this belongs to me i am the owner then you will look at everything in a different manner you are not working for salary there thank you yes. go lisa, ahead go ahead anything to add lisa no i i'm really impressed with the advice you've offered today this is going to be a great session to share out so i very much appreciate you being here thank you radesh i think you summed up from where you started your career and what were your learnings how your mentor helped you to look at the things right then you started looking at 
as a, it's not just a designing, it's also about the kind of material we use and what is the impact of those material in my built environment. Then what are the things we need to look at as an FM, right? How do we build multi-skill skills uh, typically? And you need to be an expert. As you rightly said, we cannot say that we're doing FM job. You need to build expertise in that job. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very challenging to drive even your team. And the focus about learning, uh, observing, and uh, branding yourself, that brand image is individual building it as an individual brand is very, very important the, as an FM because typically they're seen like a cost center. We ourselves uh, undersell uh, typically in a corporate. We do a lot of things without uh, creating a value because we don't measure, right? So when it is not measured, it is not valued. So how do we bring all our activities into measurable units and show it to management? And in the pandemic, we have seen in the business continuity, is typically carried out by FMs in collaboration with HRIT, ensuring onboarding till exit of an employee, ensuring a business continuity, even in a virtual places, contributing to the wellness of employees, again, functionality of the building, business connectivity. So these things have become very, very critical. And the way the FMs handle the pandemic situation, they're not less than any doctor because they started understanding how typically COVID can impact and what is that we should do as a first thing to do then tying up with the hospitals and as you rightly said we have to create experience for people right when we need to make it like a five star or a seven star uh, hotel the facility is built like that so how do you maintain and give services to employees is very very important and at the same time how do you keep tab of all your cost your um, engagements with the business units business groups and leadership becomes very very critical it was a great insight uh, Rudresh, and thank you for taking out your time and uh, joining us and uh, thank you again it, it's my pleasure to share uh, my experience and thoughts um, thank you very much uh, lisa and for giving me